and welcome to this week's angling blog. This week you join me on the banks of the canal and we're in search of pike. You do join me on a beautiful morning on the bank. There's nothing better than walking through the mud and the puddles to the venue. In that low light you're just walking along the banks, it's dark and you can just see the fish topping in the low light. Having grown up on the Bridgewater Canal, you can see the very spot on screen now where it all began for me. I'm always drawn back to the beauty of the canal. Over my time of fishing beautiful venues, you know, big mares, rivers for pike, but there is something magical about the canal. The industry of it, the history, and I always feel like the pike, I've got that bit of character about them and they've got a story to tell. When I am on the banks of the canal, it just takes me back to those early years with me dad. You know, the sights, the sounds, the smells, it has its unique feel, the Bridgewater Canal, the canal that I'm on today. And for me, it's just got that magic about it that you just don't get anywhere else. When I'm on the bank, it's almost like I'm coming back home to those early years. That is the magic of fishing, I feel. It takes you back to those early memories. And of course, while I'm waiting for those floats to start dancing, I'm just thinking back to those early times with me dad on the banks of the canal. So it hasn't taken too long for that float to dance away on that ledger and we're into the first pike of the session. It's going to be a clear day today so how many opportunities we'll actually get we don't know. When that sun comes up and the boats start it could be problems but just to see that float dance away is always worth the effort. It's like a nice little pike. And piking can be quite frantic at times. With one pike in the net, the other float has begun dancing. I was just in the middle of weighing that pike and it's just over £10. And this rod <laughs> began dancing away as well. What a beautiful morning to be on the bank. With the sun not even over the horizon, the second pike on the end of the line. Well, it starts to a morning go. I've been fishing about half an hour. We've beat the boats, we've beat the sun. Let's give them a good rest, let Danny have a rest, and then we'll take a look. For me, any pike over £10 on a canal is a nice fish. This one is just creeping over that barrier. We've got another one in the net. Let's take a look at it, because I want to get them rods back out. But a beautiful start to the day. Let's get it straight back. As I was weighing that first pike, the rod danced away on that dart, and this was the reward. A beautifully marked pike, and a great battle. There's no wrapping to take off the handles on the rods, but that's them both christened, and a great way to start a Sunday morning. So you can see the sun's just come over the horizon, and before the boats start coming, you've got to make the most of it. So the floats are back out, got a nice big net, and we're just giving these two a good rest before they go back. You've always got to give them a good rest. I know everyone says it, but pike are fragile. You've got to give them the respect they deserve. And them two will be down there, having a bit of a break, and then we'll let them go. But just look at those beautiful colours. And after the good rest, it's time to go back. That's pike number one. And the old girl, soon to be the queen of the canal, no doubt. She's probably been caught a few times before and knows the score. Beautiful start to the day. Float to back out. Mr. Swan's been through. Fingers crossed for one more pike. You'd always want one more. And pike fishing in a nutshell, 
from stood there nice and calm, admiring a beautiful, calm morning on the canal. Absolute chaos. But that's what I love about piking. It's the fact that it goes from complete calm to carnage. That adrenaline rush you get as the float comes alive. And spending those few moments with those pike, the fish on the canal that you never really see, the ghosts, but you get to spend a few moments with them on the bank, admire the beauty, and then let them go. Little tip when fishing canals, if you place your reel like that, the bait arm open, and so it sits up, the butty of rod will sit in the air, so any dog walkers or bikers will see it as they come along, and the tip of your rod goes underneath the water, and stops any ducks or anything like that, pulling on the braid, and the toe of the canal, it reduces that as well. And later on, as the leaves begin to fall, that braid being underneath the water, stops all them leaves gathering on it as well. So, yeah, just a little tip that I've picked up along the way for how I fish the canal. So pike fishing on canals can be all about windows of opportunity. So it's always great to get the float back out as soon as you can, once you've got the pike unhooked and resting. It is a spot list that I do enjoy because you can see the sun comes over the horizon, but the reeds give that shade to your float. It's in your eyes at times, it can be a pain, but that coolness and that darkness with them reeds, I think keeps that window of opportunity going a bit longer for the pike. Rods out the water, I'll quickly go over the setup we're using today. It's a Fox Predator Elite Deadbait Rod, 12 foot, 3.25 pound test curve. I've got one of the Cordum Zelos reels, and on there, I've got 60 pound braid. Down to the business end, I've got a float stop on the line, which is further up. I've got two beads, so I can see when it's up to the knot, nice and clear. I've got a dead bait pencil, a stubby sinker, nice and neat, down to a quick change swivel. I've got my homemade wire trace, and on this rod, we've got a smelt. The only difference between this and the other rod is I've got a dart on the other rod. Nice, simple setup. Like I say, pike fishing doesn't have to be complicated. You just need mechanics that work. Nice and simple. So with the rod back in the water, I know some people in the comments will be saying 3.25 pound on a canal is a bit heavy. And I would agree, but what you've got to understand, I am an all round angler and I like to keep it simple. I'll use this rod on the canal, on the rivers, on the lakes, where I'll need to punch a bait out. So for me, being able to pick up one rod for everything works. And on the canal when it's snaggy, it's definitely gonna make sure that we leave no traces in the water. So yeah, anyone wondering why I picked up the 3.25 pound, that's why, one rod for everything. So the thing that I love about fishing the canal is the excitement that comes with every cast and on this bit here every little depression in them reeds anything that sticks back a little bit where you think a pike might just be sat in weight every time you cast into one of them you're full of optimism the float's just in one of them now and yeah that is the beauty of piking for me it really is my sit down and chill out fishing it does have its madness when you get them but Compared to my days fishing and all the other fishing that I do, I always treat me piking like a chill out, relax, the week in work. And with that rod, just in one of them depressions, optimism is high. The problem can be though, there's that many spots that look so good. I mean, just a bit further along, we've got an overhanging tree. There's loads of reed beds all the way along the canal. And it can be hard at times knowing where to go, but where there's loads to explore. I mean, I can just imagine a pike sat with its mouth out, waiting for Mr. Roach to come past. And just keep going through them and hoping, as you drop in, that there's someone else at home. I just seen a swirl against the reeds, dropped on a smelt, and and take too long for this little pike <laughs> to go away. And the more you do it, you do get used to the different types of takes. And you could just tell it wasn't the biggest pike. What you want is it to slide away nice and slowly and sink. It's just nice to be out getting a bend in a rod 
Let's see if we can get this little guy in. Don't bother holding him up for the camera, but what a beautiful little pike that is. You can just see the colours on it. I bet he's had his head just hanging out them reeds. He's come out for a little roach. I've clocked him, put a bait near him, and he's come out and taken it. Third pike of the day. But as you can see on screen now, when I said about the pike having character, this pike is blind in one eye, but happily surviving. I'm just showing again those windows of opportunity and then feeding periods, you know, two hours without a bite and then both rods go at the same time. And there's another one of those nice pike. And like I say, nice is always relative to the venue that you're on and for the canal, some nice pikes there. And you look at them lovely colours. Let's get him in and take a look. There we go, pike number four of the day. I'm just showing those feeding periods and windows of opportunity that I was talking about before. You know, when you drop on them in them little nooks and crannies, you can imagine that snout is just hanging out, them reeds, waiting for the food to come past. Over the next hour or two, the floats remain motionless and the boat traffic really did pick up. It was time to call an end to the session and I really do hope you've enjoyed coming along on this Sunday morning session with me for pike. This morning with that nip in the air really has felt like the pike season has begun and I'm sure there'll be plenty more videos on the channel so if you're into that type of fishing hit the subscribe button down below and there'll be plenty more videos to come. All that remains now is for me to wish you all tight lines in your own fishing and we'll catch you all next week.